Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's still been really, really hot. It's about nearly 100 degrees today. Uh, so I'm not gonna do any welding because that's miserable in the heat. So I thought I'd take the chance to adjust the valves on the uh, six cylinder Mercedes, the M130. Uh, I'm a little overdue on that. It should be done every 12,000 miles. I think I'm probably at about 15, 16,000 miles, so I should should get that done. I've got the uh, uh, cam cover gasket and uh, to replace. So let's pull it in and take a look. Okay, first things first. Let's take the uh, linkages off of the uh, uh, throttle linkage off here. We'll disconnect here, here, and here. I use a flat blade screwdriver. I've got a bit of wrap on it uh, from. Our previous jobs just pop that guy out of there there we go this guy that's that out of the way so obviously we've got to take this pivot arm off here uh, so I'm going to undo these two 10 mil nuts on the side here. Okay, that's that, and then we've got two nuts down here just by the uh, uh, the manifold here. 12, say. Yeah, twelves. Make sure you don't drop that. Two washers there. Okay, that's that guy out of the way. Okay, little uh I think that's our Phillips, isn't it? Yeah, a little Phillips for this breather line here. You can get a Phillips screwdriver. Take that guy off. All right, we can take the cam cover off, 13 mil socket here. Good old look. So let's get you in close. We have a good old look at the condition of this cam, shall we? So you can see the cam loads are really nice shape. All the way along. I'm reaching a bit here. Yeah, it looks like in lovely shape actually. Look at that. Not bad for a 50 year old motor. So that's good. As far as the chain, there didn't seem to be any play on the top here. Got good chain tension. Doesn't seem to be any issue here. Got We've got uh, metal guides, which is really nice. Same as on my um, 4.5, got metal guides. So you don't have to really worry about those guys. So, everything looks in order. Let's get adjustments. So first things first, got to take these springs off, okay, to enable us to do the adjustment. Um, so let's get those off and uh, We'll go from there. Now, I didn't mention uh, as I started, but before you start any of this, you want to make sure it's all blown off and everything, all clean. Uh, I had just cleaned the engine not too long back, so I was all pretty good here, but uh, make sure you blow off so no dirt gets in there. 
So let's get those springs off. I have this tool here. Um, I'm trying to think what I got this for now. I think this is like some kind of spring tool for some brake work, but it works well to get these uh, little springs off of here. So we just hook them over and unlatch those from the rockers. Them. So hook those. There we go. So there you go. This hooks into a little clip. I don't know if you can see that, can you? Yeah. Um, make sure it's focused. Okay, this hooks into a little clip that's at the bottom. I'll get you in a little closer and then it rotates up and then this piece engages with a little indentation in the rocker. It's all pretty straightforward. So, put those aside. Uh, you might hear some sirens in the background, there's another darn fire. But it's far enough away that I don't need to worry. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing this job, just in case, you know. But if it gets, I'll be keeping an eye on the news. If it gets too close, this might get abandoned <laughs> and thrown back together in haste. I'm going to do the other side and I'll get back to you. Well after all said and done um, I took these springs off and I keep hearing tankers flying over. We've got an air attack base just two miles as the crow flies and there's a there's a 40 acre fire this way and it's still a fair ways away but and it's very quiet and peaceful no wind but I'd hate to get part way through this and we get a strong wind gas springing fire this way. So bearing on the side of caution, uh, I'm going to put this back together quickly and probably take this up again tomorrow because last thing I want is not to be able to move this because I'm just in the valve. So, uh, and this is definitely my evacuation car. <laughs> so anyway, I'll get back to you uh, tomorrow. Hopefully. No, I will. Okay, I've got to pull this back together. All right, cheers, guys. Oh, I hope you can see that. See that spring there? Now, difficult for me to explain how to hook them on. you just got to hook this spring onto this spring that uh, surrounds it and two little hooks. You'll see it, and the way you know you've got it, you can kind of rock it back and forth to know that both hooks are engaged. And when you're at that point, let me see if I can do it while I'm holding the camera. This little hook tool and uh, works really well, you see. So you can hook that clip at the bottom there, see, like that, and then lift it. You know you're engaged because otherwise it would spring everywhere, wouldn't it? So you just put that there, get your hook tool out. See, it's not quite engaged yet. I like to reposition it. There you go rock it back and forth a little bit, make sure it's thoroughly engaged. And like I say, visually check that uh, the hooks are engaged both sides, just for peace of mind really, you know. So I think you probably hear a fire plane going over. But anyway, got all the springs back on. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now, while we, before we finish up tomorrow, after this darn fire sorted out, I'm gonna, clean the cam cover with oxalic acid that shouldn't take long and uh, see how that comes up um, someone was asking in the group recently about cam cover cleaning uh, I've done the uh, 6.3 cam covers but I haven't got around to doing my uh, 6 yet so let's see how that works shall we as you can see it's let me turn it over it's not in horrendous condition but you can see it could do with a clean couldn't it uh, I don't want to lose this label because that's the original label so I'll work around that uh, so let's spritz it with some oxalic acid and see how that works. So this is the wood bleach I, I get, it's hardware store stuff. Uh, just called wood bleach, it's oxalic acid crystals. Uh, I think I might have shown you before, but let's get it in some fairly warm to hot water and a spritzer bottle and see how it does on this cam cover, shall we? Right, I've mixed up uh, probably I think in around a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half in a spritzer bottle just like this and I'm just gonna soak it for a bit and it's pretty hot water so we'll just soak it
let that bite. Can do maybe a little agitation with a a little uh, nail brush. It's already in it there. Let's see. Little nail brush to get it loosened. Let's do that. I think that is still a little red scotch bright, just to kind of help loosen some of the worst, you know. You don't want to really rub hard because then you're shining it, aren't you? Uh, just just to kind of agitate the or loosen off the grimy stuff, but not burnish, you know. Get it nice and wet. I've seen people using oven cleaners and all that. I think that's a bit pole vault over a mouse turd, as they say. But this way it seems to work nicely. Giving it that flat look, you know, that we're all after, or well, some of us are. Figured I can do this while there's a fire going on, because it won't take a sec to dry this off. And sling it back on. Probably someone asking about us. Hold on. Okay, so as you can see very shortly with a little bit of very light scrubbing with the scotch pad, comes up gorgeous. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, I'll show you the end result obviously, but we'll just, you get the idea. Gives it that nice original look without making it all burnishy, you know. I mean, it has a very, very slight sheen to it, but. Cleans it very nicely, and so the more you do it, uh, the better it looks. So I'm going to finish that off and uh, work my way around and get back to you. Just want to give you a little closer look at how this little hook spring thing works here. So here's the springs on this side, so it's so easy, you just hook that guy there and just give it a tug, you see, and then that one there, do it a tug, that one, do it a tug, and they come off real easy, instead of messing with a flat bladed screwdriver, that's that one, and then this one, but unhook them from the hooks below. Easier said than done here, look, on camera. There we go, see those little hooks. So, that's that. Now all the springs are off, we can uh, do the adjustments. And I'll obviously refer to you to the manual to make sure you know which ones you're adjusting. Uh, but uh, the easiest way to tell, you've got obviously your intake manifold here, okay, that leads straight into these two. So the adjustments are going to be made on the uh, intakes on this side of the engine, okay, those six there, in line with these two banks here, three banks, uh, and then on the other side where we make the adjustment is for the exhaust on this side where you can obviously see it goes into the exhaust manifold here, um, here, here, and back here. So let me refer to you over to the manual, just so you're all clear preaching to the choir i'm sure to a lot of you guys but anyway here's the old shop manual so you can see front of the engine obviously and uh in white is all the inlets and then the exhausts and obviously the inlets get adjusted on this other side okay uh and then these are for v8s and all that good stuff so then we'll turn over for our valve clearances Okay, and if you can see the various models up here, the 6.3, slightly different exhaust gapping on the 6.3, but 0 0.20 on the exhaust for the M130 and 0 0.10 on the intake. So let's uh, get our feeler gauges set up and we'll start. Before we get started, I'm just going to clean this oiler tube with some brake cleaner. I'll show you why in a sec. 
Let's see what valves can be adjusted right now without doing anything. Okay, we're just the engine as it is, and then we will mark those um, ones that we've done with this yellow marker here on the tube itself. Then we won't go back on it. I saw Pierre Diary doing this, thought it was a great idea. Obviously, you can also do a um, write it down on a piece of paper which ones you've so you keep track and you're not going back on yourself. So we got our two markings here. This one is for the intake, 0 0.10 mil, uh, 0, 0 0.10 mil on the intake, 0 0.20 millimeter on the exhaust. So just lock that. So we've got those sticking out ready for us. So let's see what valves can be adjusted just with the engine in the position it is right now. Now, that one's loose. This one's an intake valve, okay. Obviously you've just got the, the lobe, the cam lobe, it's pointing that way. The manual says it should be pointing up, but uh, uh, the whole circumference, the round part, is fine. Um, you can rotate it straight up if you want. Now what this is, this is a special, the uh, made by Hazard, uh, the uh, valve, let me get focus there, there we go, valve adjustment tool, um, 17 mil by has it for uh, the M130. I think the 127 engine is uh, 14 mil, but also you can use a high quality crow's foot as well. This is just specially made for it. Uh, part number, let's have a look, 329-3, Germany. That's all the numbers that are on there, 17 mil has it. So, okay. So what we're gonna do, as I say, this is the the intake valve, okay, so we're going to do that on the 0 0.10 mil, obviously, because it's the right one here. Let's check it right now as it stands. And we'll give that a couple of wraps on the armor there, make sure it's seated correctly. And that feels pretty loose there, so. Yeah, it's not dragging at all right across the whole surface of the of the uh, uh, seat of the rocker there. So let's tighten that one up. Now sometimes these can be quite tight. And obviously what I'm doing is undoing the nut to essentially close the gap, bring this rocker arm closer to the, uh, the cam. Okay, so we're going to be going this way. No, sorry, this way. <laughs> okay, so let's... And it doesn't take a lot, you know, a lot of movement. I'm just going to do that. That's not enough. I like to go a little conservatively. That's No drag it. Oh, that was a loose one. Essentially what that is, there's a little pin essentially with a ball on the end that the uh, rocker arm goes over. Okay, And as you're rotating it, this pin is going up and if you're going the uh, clockwise, it's going down. All pretty logical. I figure you can picture in your mind, it makes sense, don't it? So let's get that. See, that's too tight now. I'll go back in. Go the other way, just a smidge. drag across the surface there. Maybe I'll go a little tighter than that. Just it's a really fine adjustment. Make sure you give it a couple of wraps. That feels good. I like that one. It's got a little drag uh, and then what we'll do 
Don't want to take credit for this idea. Thanks, Pierre. I'm using a yellow one, but clean that oiler tube and then you can mark it, can't you? Oh, that's not very good paint, is it? Let me get a black marker. I thought this would show up better, but let me get a black marker paint. Okay, hopefully this will work. Make sure. Oh yeah, that's much better. Marker. Make sure you don't go to rubbing it with your hand and losing, then you'll lose your place, won't you? So that one's that one's done. Okay, this one can't be done because it's pushing down. Okay. This one here, this one can be done because it's not on the lobe, it's still on the curvature. So we can do this guy, and this guy is an exhaust valve, okay? That's an exhaust valve, that one. See, well that reads just without any adjustment. Oh, that's way loose. That needs tightening. much. This is going to take, well, it takes a little time consuming when you haven't done this too, too many times, but just take your time, there's no rush. You don't want to get it wrong, do you? Yeah, it could be just a smidge tied up. Fiddly one, that one. You can see that with a very little input from the wrench, that's good. Got a nice drag on that one. Okay, with a very little input on the wrench, it shows quite a bit on the feeler going. So anyway, so don't go making big adjustments. Um, so I'm going to work my way round, okay, to all the ones that I can access, and then I'm going to do what Pierre did and just jump the engine to get to the next corresponding cylinder. Mark that guy done. Okay, so what I did, I just adjusted all the um, valves that could be adjusted that were had a little play in them, marked them all, and then I just blipped the. Uh, starter just to crank the engine over. I disconnected the um, distributor so it didn't fire up or anything. Uh, and so we've got a few more we can adjust with that, which is this guy, this front one, which is an exhaust valve. Then we've got this one, which is an intake valve and then a few others up here, but I'll get to that. I'm gonna carry on and then I'll, I'll get back to you. Couple of other things, uh, as I say, you need very, very little adjustment, I mean, uh, movement on the wrench to make quite a difference in the reading on the feeler gauge. So, um, very, very fine adjustment. Um, there's that, and also sometimes these studs, if you haven't done it for a long time, uh, they can be very tough and if it's really really tough and you are concerned of rounding off those studs you know on that nut there what you need to do is get a spring compressor remove that rocker itself okay and then get a full socket on that stud to break excuse me to break it loose 
because you really don't want to round those studs off, okay? You probably won't run into that. I haven't as yet needed to do that with any of my 108s that I've owned, uh, but uh, it does happen from time to time from my understanding. So we've got three valves left to adjust. Again, uh, just gonna crank the engine just a, a smidge to get those in alignment for adjustment, then we can button this thing up. Okay, that's good. That's brought this one into alignment, and this one's in alignment, and so is that. That's great. Okay. Now let me get those done and I will wrap up for the day and we'll get all this buttoned up. Right, so that's everything done, all all adjusted, all just a smidge loose, I'd say, just a, a, a crack loose. Um, that I've found to be the case every time I adjust, they're just a tad loose, obviously down to uh, slight wear. And when you're putting in the feeler gauge, you know, if you have, if these aren't, if the two surfaces uh, from the cam to the the rocker lobe and maybe not quite parallel uh, you want to take it from the, the closest point so if it's good here and it's real loose here that's good enough because you don't want to do it say uh, too tight uh, good here and then it would be too tight and here you see all of these seem to be very parallel to each other so it's very evenly worn um, and like I say it's very crucial to give that little rocker a little tap to seat it correctly. So what I'm going to do now is put the springs back on. Uh, and uh, then we can put our new gasket on and get it buttoned up. Another thing when you're looking at the uh, chain, uh, you want to obviously see if you've got any particular loose. This has got a very slight lift, but it's really pretty darn good actually. You don't want to be able to lift this off at all. Um, the six cylinders are not as prone to stretching as much as the eights because they're a much shorter chain. Um, you obviously want to check your tension and make sure your chain tension is doing its job. Check your guides and also, a little difficult to film here, but you want to check the teeth of the, uh, the cam gear. And when they're starting to wear, you'll see it, it's got a kind of a wave to it. It's not uh, perfectly curved. You'll see a kind of an arc to it. Uh, it's a little difficult to film, but uh, give, get yourself in close there, check your gear. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, when you're putting these springs back on, obviously give them a once over, make sure they're all in good shape. You know, you don't want a broken spring in there, do you? So um, all of these I've had a good look over and they all seem in really good shape. And I would imagine, I haven't checked the book, but I would imagine there's a service interval to just replace these springs. Um, because you know, just like anything, it don't last forever, but um, it's something I'd have to look up. But these all seem very good, and like I say, this is this is really handy. This little leverage tool, I think I've already mentioned this, but uh, make sure you do a visual check that that's engaged in that little slot there. And we get the flashlight on and see that little hook down there the way the spring hooks in both sides, check all the way along. Do a visual check both sides on all valves. I'm a real stickler for that because my eyes aren't the best. So make sure everything's good before you button it up. All right, now I just fit a new cam cover gasket, dry fit, obviously, just that uh, goes over this. This is a mile one, M-A-H-L-E, mile, I think it is. I got a few sets. I've got one, a pair for the uh, the V8, which I'm going to do very soon. So it just goes on there. I give it a wipe out inside as well. So, and that is it. Let's get that bolted back on, and then we're all done. So you can see the cover came out quite nice it's obviously got still scratches and what have you there but it's got that nice patina that kind of old look I wouldn't want it all too new looking to be honest with you I like those kind of battle scars you know but it's just clean and presentable you know all right now all the valves are adjusted uh, valves are adjusted I've cleaned the surface of the uh, cylinder head there 
cleaned it all, made sure there's no debris down there. And uh, I didn't do it this time, but I, I guess you could undo this um, oiler tube here and clean this oiler tube out, make sure it's unrestricted. I didn't do that this time, but you could do that. Uh, unlike the 4.5, it's metal attached. The 4.5 has little plastic clips holding these oiler tubes on both banks. That's something you need to change. If, uh, if you don't know the history of it or they haven't been done for a long time, you don't want the oiler tube going into the in, onto the rockers, do you? So let's get that camp cover back on. Okay, see so if we can get this on the first time without fiddling around too much. Oops. There we go. Dropped on. Looks pretty clean. I mean, I didn't go crazy, but that looks quite presentable now. Uh, and then do a visual check, make sure that everything is seated properly. I will do that now with a flashlight, as my eyes aren't the best. I like to just do a check. Make sure nothing's twisted or anything. Oh. Looks good. Let me check the back there. Probably more by feel, really. Yeah, you can feel it back there. That's good. Okay, let's get our bolt back on. New copper crush washers on each of the bolts here. Torque those down. Let me find the torque setting. So that thing is 12, something like that, inch pounds. It's not very much. I think it's something like that. Let me check first. Just torquing it. My torque wrench here, and wait a minute, wrong wrench, wrong socket. That one on here. We have set it to seven foot pounds. Oh, bless me. Seven foot pounds. Whoops, a daisy. You give me a audible when I close in on it. Make sure. Seven. 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 That's it. I'd just like to make note of a few things. You know, this breather's got a little wear in it, a little tearing. I'll make sure I replace that. Put that on the old order list. Get that back on there. That's it, we go with the linkage. Oh, I can the linkage a little clean up as well while I'm at it. So let's get that guy back on there. Actually, this in first. Tilt it up. That goes straight on there like that. Again, this side's a 12 mil, and I'm not gonna be talking those, just nip them up, just be gentle, because they're going into the uh, aluminium uh, intake, so, or well, the bolts are, so you can very easily damage them. I just give them a little nip up. That's that. And this side is a 10. Now before we put everything back, I'll get a little bit of uh, 
uh, silicon on these ball joints here and lubricate those. A little dollop on each of those little balls there. And also you could probably shoot some PB blaster lubricant inside those little bearings here, those little ball bearings or like a ball joint in there. If you're really dedicated, you take the circlip off and clean it all out. I haven't done it this time, but uh, I have done it in the past. Get that on there. All right, there we go. It's operating nice, and that's pretty much it. All back together. Okay, guys, I think that's it for today. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward job. I kind of explained it for people that were a little unfamiliar with it, a little nervous of doing a job like that. Just one step at a time. Uh, if you can get the hazard tool, that would be a good thing. Otherwise, a high quality crow's foot would be good. And then a fairly larger, uh, you know, like I use a torque wrench to get some leverage on it. Um, Obviously feeler gauges, gasket, and that's kind of it really. It's not uh, not a very difficult job, but it's something that should be done and is often neglected on these uh, older uh, Mercedes, you know, the ones that need adjustments uh, every 12,000 miles, you know, and even I, this had gone a little further than I would have liked. Uh, I hope to do the V8 soon, go a little further on that one, or possibly a chain replacement. Um, and the guides are good on that but we'll check those oil eclipse i did that about six seven years ago but we'll check them again and uh various other things with that car i would like to do some new engine mounts on this as well because they were those uh not very good aftermarket ones um euro or something like that not very good doesn't last not worth buying so i want to find some mercedes ones for this lem forder um, or something of that nature. Okay, that's about it for this video. Uh, thankfully the fire was put out yesterday, not a problem, but just in case I put it all back together, didn't want to be get caught short and not be able to move this one. And so coming hopefully into some cooler weather in the next coming uh, month or six weeks or so, and then we'll be back out here with Gusto on the 109 project. So thanks a lot, see you in the next one, and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye, thanks.